So Valerie demands that we now create a, a controller to stabilize this function. So this is the plant function, so 1 over s minus 2, and we previously provided a proportional control to, for it, and we found that it was not stable. We put a proportional control of 1, and it was not stable. So now we need to stabilize it. So, well, how are we going to do that? The system is what it is. We can't really change that. What we can change as designers is the controller. So we know that a proportional control did not work. So why don't we just look at PID, Proportional Integral Derivative Control, and see if we can apply that to the system and see if we can stabilize it. So to do that, we'll start with, I'll just write PID in here. And now we have to write the equation for that. So let's write the equation for that right here. So this is going to be GC, and this is our closed loop transfer function, if you remember. So we need to write the equation that we're going to put into here for the GC. Okay? So if you remember the different parts of PID, you just kind of add the, the three different parts together. So P would be some constant, and we're going to call a little P there for proportional constant. Then we have integral, so 1 over s, and then we have a coefficient, so we have k, and we're going to call it i for integral, and then we have the derivative control, so we have a derivative, and then we have, we're going to call it kd for derivative. And so let's put this into just one, combine this into one equation, or one fraction, and if you multiply this by s over s, multiply this by s over s, we will get the expression. And I'm going to just reorder it here so we would get kd s squared plus this kp times s and then plus just a ki here. So this would be the fraction form of our controller, the PID controller. Okay, so we have our two expressions here. We know gc, we already know gp. And so we're going to put it into our closed loop function and see what our output, our total closed loop transfer function will look like. So we'll do that over here. So t equals, okay, so this is going to get a little bit exciting here. Okay, so I'm going to move this down actually. So we're going to go t equals, so we have this whole expression, right? So we have kds squared plus kps plus ki. This is all over s. And then we have this function, so we have multiplied by s minus 2 over 1. And then we have that same exact thing. The numerator, denominator, is 1 plus that, that whole thing. So we'll just write it here. So we have s, s minus 2, this guy on the top, k, d, s squared, k, p, s plus k, i. Okay. We don't like these s's in the fractions, so we're going to multiply both sides by s, s minus 2, both top and bottom. Okay, that will, let's evaluate that right here. So that gets rid of the numerator, denominator here, so we'll just have, and then total numerator, we'll just have kd s squared plus kp s plus ki. And then we'll do the same multiplication here, and we get s, we're going to just multiply it out, s squared minus 2s plus just this expression. So kd s squared plus kp s plus ki. All right, and now let's, in the denominator, let's bring common terms together. So we'll end up with s, well, kd plus 1 s squared. And then let's look at the s's. So we have these two values here. So it's kp minus 2 s. And then we have a ki plus ki. And the numerator here will be the same. kd s squared plus kp s plus ki. Okay, so here is our overall transfer function. 
implementing PID control. This is before we have not chosen the values of our coefficients. So this was what, once we pick those values, we would plug it in here and this would be our transfer function. Well, what, is, what do we ultimately want to do? We want to stabilize this system. So we need to see if uh, we can pick these poles. So we're going to pick them to be in the left half plane because we know that's stable. So let's, for example, say we want our poles at negative 1. So negative 1, negative 1. Because this is a second order, so we can pick the two poles. We want them to be negative 1, negative 1. Let's see if we can make that happen. So if we did two poles at negative 1, we would have s plus 1 squared. That's what we want our uh, denominator to look like. And if we multiply that all out, we would get s squared plus 2s plus 1. So all we have to do now, hopefully, <laughs> to achieve that is to make these look the same. So not too bad. Let's see if we can do it. I'm running out of board space. We're going to start writing it up here. Okay, so all we need to do is make kd plus 1 equal to this coefficient, which is 1. And then we need this kp minus 2 to be equal to 2. And then we need ki to be equal to 1. So if we just multi do these calculations, we'll see that kd equal to 0, actually, will satisfy this equation kp equal to a positive 4, and then ki equal to 1 will put the two poles at negative 1 and negative 1, which means that our system will be stable. So going through this process, and if in this case we just picked poles and said we want these specific poles, we were able to choose these coefficients to achieve that. So if we put in these coefficients, we should see a stabilized output here. So let's look at that in MATLAB real quick and just confirm our findings. Here we have our system in MATLAB Simulink and we have our plant and this is a the block or multiple blocks to make up the control system. So here we have the proportional control, the integral control, and the derivative control here. And we want to now implement the correct PID control to make our system stable. So just to show that these values are actually important, first I just started out with ones because when you put them down in Simulink, they just start as one. So let's just see if, for example, this just implementing some PID and picking some values, if that will make it stable. So we did that, we ran it, and we see that, no, these values do not make the system stable. So we have our input coming in here, our Y ref, our error is going all over the place, and so is our value. So just putting a PID control doesn't necessarily work. You have to pick the right values. So for this one, we wanted to make it exactly a, a negative 1, negative 1 pole. So we have to now change our values. So if we look back at what we just derived, we found that KD had to be actually equal to 0. And what this means also is that we're actually not using the D part of this control, so it's actually just going to be a PI control. And our KP value here was 4, and our KI value was 1, actually, so we're good there. Let's see if just changing those values will make a difference in our system. So run it, and let's look at our system. We see that Yes, excellent. Our, after our step function and the input, our output, sorry, this is our output down here, our output goes a little bit of an overshoot and then comes back down, stabilizes to 1. And our error does the same. It jumps up and a little bit and then stabilizes back to 0. So we have successfully chosen the values, the coefficients for our PID control, ended up just being a PI control, to make this unstable plant function stable. So that's the beauty of closed loop feedback and how we can choose controller values to actually control the way that our system reacts.